Battle Through the Heavens Chapter 945, Han Clan, Han Shui Xiao Yan endured a day of extremely painful bumps on the carriage before a thread of Dou Qi finally appeared in his empty body. Although this Dou Qi was still extremely weak, it still managed to support him by randomly taking things out of his storage ring. Additionally, an entire day of nursing enabled him to alight from the carriage and walk despite his injuries showing little improvement. He no longer needed to lie in the carriage like a corpse. Xiao Yan gently twisted his arm after standing up from the carriage. The slight pain that was faintly transmitted from it caused him to smile bitterly. At this moment, he was currently at his weakest point in many years. Of course, despite his body being weak, anyone who had ill intention toward him would end up swallowing a bitter pill. Forget about the earth demon puppet hidden within his storage ring. Even Xiao Yan himself was not as powerless as he appeared on the surface. After all, he was also a high-tier alchemist on top of being a Dou practitioner. His spiritual strength was not the least bit inferior even when compared with some elite Dou zones. Although he did not dare to say that he was able to contend with an elite Dou zone with just his spiritual strength, an ordinary expert Dou Huang would not be able to gain much of an advantage over Xiao Yan. With these trump cards, Xiao Yan's confidence in his heart increased a little. He wiped his face before opening the curtain of the carriage. After the carriage's curtain was pulled open, numerous covered carriages appeared in his eyes. There was a dark black bull-like magical beast with two horns on its head pulling the carriages at the front. The two sides of the carriages had numerous human figures on horseback. Most of these people had naked arms and wore rough skin clothes, which appeared sturdy. Behind them were weapons that contained a cold glow as they flickered glaringly under the sun. Oh, this little fellow has actually survived. Haha, <laughs> Tseng Nyo, you have damn well lost to the old me this time around. Numerous gazes from both sides of the carriage were shot over when Xiao Yan opened the curtain. They were immediately startled. A joyous, wild laughter was also emitted from the mouth of a large man not far away. This large man had a somewhat sturdy built. His naked arm was filled with various kinds of scars. A ghost-headed large blade, that contained some chillness, on his back had a bright redness adhering to it. Damn it, I've seen a ghost. This little fellow is able to survive despite suffering such serious injuries. He is really lucky, a skinny looking man immediately shook his head helplessly after the laughter from the large man sounded. After which, he glared at the man and snappily said, What are you howling for? The old me doesn't care about this little bit of money. However, despite winning this little amount of money, it is still not enough for you to have more rides with the tender women in the brothels. Who asked you to bother about the old me? The large man scolded. After which, he rode his horse forward and came in front of Xiao Yan. His gaze swept over the ladder before he smiled and said, Little fellow, I am called Gui Tu, Ghost Head, people call me Old Ghost. I was the first person to discover you in that northern desert. However, you need not thank me. The money I won earlier is enough of a thank you gift. Ha ha. Thank you very much big brother Gui Tu. I am Xiao Yan. Xiao Yan smiled as he sat down with his back leaning against the carriage. Most of the people whom he had met during these years were old cunning fellows. Their strengths were so great that they were terrifying. He had not made much contact with someone at such a low level for quite a long time. This caused him to recall those mercenaries when he was helping his father manage the marketplace in Wu-Tang City back then. They were similar to these people in front of him, appearing rough, and uninhibited. With Xiao Yan's spiritual strength, he was naturally able to tell that the strongest among these large men in front of him was at the Dou Ling class while the weakest was merely a De Dou Shi. This Gui Tu in front of him was only around a two-star Dou Ling. Haha, <laughs> on account of you calling me big brother, I will protect you along this journey. However, little fellow Xiao Yan, 
this body of yours really cannot make it. You should train more in the future. If you don't possess a little strength in the central plains, you will be looked down upon by others. Xiao Yan's act of calling Gui Tua big brother seemed to have caused him to be extremely happy. After which, he glanced at Xiao Yan's body, frowned, and chastised. His tone was one used when reprimanding someone from a younger generation. This caused Xiao Yan to slightly grin. Gui Tu, you should cease randomly grumbling around here and teaching others nonsense. The sound of horse hooves was transmitted from the front not long after Gui Tu's voice sounded. Immediately, Han Chang's chiding voice rang out. He he, it is not as though I have said anything wrong. Gui Tu dryly laughed and replied upon seeing Han Chong. Han Chong ignored this fellow. His gaze turned to Xiao Yan, saw his much better complexation, and he involuntarily smiled as he said, Good. Little brother Xiao Yan, despite suffering such serious injuries, you are actually able to walk after two days. Xiao Yan smiled. He randomly found an excuse and smiled as he said, I have a strong life. Han Chong was a simple and honest person. He did not bother too much on this matter. Looking at the sky, he loudly said, It is becoming dark soon. Xiao Jie, young lady, has said to prepare to set up camp. Gu Ei Tu, you will lead a couple of people and see if there is any good spots nearby. Liang Ye, you will lead some people to patrol around. Gang Bei, you will lead a couple of people. Clearly, Han Chong had quite a high position within this convoy, numerous orders were emitted from his mouth with no one voicing any objections. All of them uttered, yes sir, in a strange manner before leading their people away. Han Chong also sighed in relief after the orders were issued. He smiled and asked Xiao Yan, can you walk? Xiao Yan nodded. He leaped down from the carriage. Although his footsteps staggered a little, he still managed to stabilize itself. Seeing this, Han Chong bitterly laughed as he said, Looks like you still need to recuperate. After suffering such serious injuries, it is extremely difficult for you to recover completely. If any sequela were to remain, it is likely that your training in the future will become troublesome. Xiao Yan smiled and indicated for Han Chong not to be worried when he heard the concern in his voice. Han Chong ceased saying anything more after seeing that Xiao Yan was so open-minded. He quietly sighed and turned around, preparing to gather people to set up camp. This convoy was quite efficient. Within less than half an hour, numerous white-colored tents appeared on a small hill. There was also a fence surrounding the tents, and a medicinal powder that repealed poisonous insects was scattered outside the fence. Xiao Yan did not do much work due to the weary state of his body. He randomly walked to a spot in the camp before sitting down. His gaze slowly swept around him. According to what Han Chong had mentioned, this convoy should belong to the clan's guards of some whatever Tian Bei City Han clan. The goods on the carriages should be things that they were escorting. The strength of this convoy was mostly at the Dou Ling class, with a couple of them being at the peak of the Dou Ling class. They were similar to Han Chong. Of course, the owner of the strongest aura would naturally not be missed by Xiao Yan. As he thought of this, Xiao Yan's gaze was involuntarily thrown to a carriage among the many carriages. That carriage was clearly much more luxurious compared to the others. There was even a faint serene fragrance being transmitted from it. It was clearly occupied by a lady. The thing that caused Xiao Yan to pay attention to it was that there was an aura that had reached a three-star Do Wang within the carriage. This person was the strongest person within the convoy. Creek. While Xiao Yan was focusing on it, the tightly shut carriage suddenly opened, and a long sleek leg appeared in Xiao Yan's eyes. Xiao Yan was startled and his gaze slowly shifted up. Surprise clearly flashed across his eyes. It was unexpected that the owner of the three-star Dou Wang aura was actually such a young, pretty person. 
The lady had willow-like eyebrows. Her skin was snow-like, and she was blessed with a tall figure. She was wearing purple clothes. Under the cover of the purple clothes was an exceptionally voluminous body with well-proportioned curves. The only lacking aspect was that her face carried a chillness. Her pretty eyes possessed a stern feeling. Nevertheless, Xiao Yan suddenly had a faint feeling that this lady's face seemed a little familiar, however, he was also absolutely certain that this was the first time he saw her. The numerous surrounding gazes had gathered on this lady the moment she appeared. There was the usual heat within these gazes. However, most of them were respectful. This lady's beautiful eyes slowly swept over the campsite the moment she descended the carriage. Anyone who was seen by her immediately acted as though they were working. This caused Xiao Yan to having difficulty stopping himself from laughing as he watched them. While Xiao Yan felt that the scene was comical, the lady's gaze suddenly paused on him. Her eyebrows were slightly vertical as she slowly walked over. A moment later, her long sleek legs appeared in front of Xiao Yan. Her somewhat icy cold voice was emitted, You are the person whom Han Chong had rescued during the journey, right? I. Xiao Yan nodded his head. He wanted to stand up out of politeness, but the weariness within his body caused him to bitterly laugh. His body shook a little before he ended up sitting back down. The eyebrows of the lady were knit even more tightly together when she saw Xiao Yan in such a weak state. She spoke in a faint voice, There are rules within the convoy of my Han clan. The convoy does not support any idle people who do nothing. On account of you being injured, I shall not say anything more. However, I hope that you will not sit down and do nothing even if you only have the strength to put up fences. Do you understand? It was the first time that Xiao Yan had met such a stern and serious woman in so many years. This caused him to be able to neither laugh nor cry. Since when had he actually become an idle person? However, he could only nod his head despite thinking this in his heart. The lady's face softened a little upon seeing Xiao Yan nod his head. She randomly tossed something to him and said, I am called Han Shui, and I am currently the person managing this convoy. You can look for me if you have any issues in the future. If you perform well this time, I might be able to allow you to join the guard of the Han clan when we arrive at Tianbei City. Although it will not allow you to gain a huge fortune, it will at least enable you to survive. This is a little healing medicine and should have some effect on your injuries. Additionally, we will be passing through the territory of the demon snake Xia Mang. You should be careful. Hide in the carriage and don't come out. After saying this, Han Shui walked past Xiao Yan. After which, she walked into a tent. Xiao Yan smiled after receiving the jade bottle Han Shui tossed over. Although this lady was stern and appeared somewhat cold and indifferent, she seemed to be a good person. No wonder the people here had great respect for her. However, what was the matter with that thread of familiar feeling? Xiao Yan involuntarily frowned when he thought until this point, it was impossible for him to know her. Chapter 946 Demon Snake Xia Mang Night gradually covered the entire desert. The moon hung like a silver plate high up in the distant sky, scattering its faint cool moonlight over the land. There were few people within the desolate desert. However, there was surprisingly some fire and hearty human voices appearing on a hill. The sound spread and significantly reduced the quiet coldness around. Quite a number of large piles of fire were emitting sparks that flew toward the sky from within the camp on the hilltop. The light from the flames lit the entire campground until it was quite bright. Many people were surrounding the piles of fire. Their hands held some wine jars as they laughed out loud. After which, the bottles collided together, emitting a ping sound amid some laughter. Xiao Yan sat beside a pile of fire. He smiled as he watched these large men around him, who had drunk until they had flushed faces. 
This kind of atmosphere was something that he had seldom endured. Brother Xiao Yan, here. Drink a little to warm your body. The desert is cold. A laugh suddenly sounded while Xiao Yan was fiddling with the flame. Immediately, a wine jar flew toward him. Xiao Yan extended his hand and accurately grabbed it. After which, he raised his head to look at Han Chong, who had the smell of alcohol all over him. He then smiled with a nod. Thank you big brother Han Chong. After saying this, he raised the wine jar and gulped two mouthfuls. The fiery heat rose from his stomach, causing a flush to surface on his face. Haha, <laughs> little fellow Xiao Yan, not bad. You still possess some spirit of a man. Some of the surrounding Han clan's guards involuntarily smiled and praised when they saw that Xiao Yan had drank half a bag of potent wine in one shot. Xiao Yan smiled to everyone. He was just about to speak when the tent in the middle of the campsite suddenly opened. A figure that appeared extremely alluring under the moonlight immediately appeared in front of everyone's gazes. That figure was Han Shui. At this moment, Han Shui appeared to have just bathed. Hence, her smooth black hair carried some moisture as it floated down. At this moment, she appeared to have the additional enchantment of a woman. This caused quite a number of younger Han clan's guards to have quicker heartbeats upon seeing her. Han Shui walked out of her tent. Her gaze randomly glanced around once. After which, she sat down beside a fire not far from Xiao Yan's group. She took out a dagger and took a piece of grilled meat from the fire rack before slowly placing it into her small mouth. The elegance from her slow chewing appeared to be incompatible with the surrounding rough chewing atmosphere. However, it must be said that the current Han Shui was extremely beautiful and moving. The voices of Han Chong and the others were unknowingly suppressed after Han Shui had come out. Their dirty jokes were also hurriedly swallowed into their stomach. Xiao Yan turned his head and looked at Han Shui who appeared to have a delicateness that belonged to a woman under the firelight which was mixed with the stern coldness from the daytime. He he, why? Have you been smitten by Xiao Jia, young lady? Han Chong by the side suddenly rushed forward while Xiao Yan was focusing on Han Shui and softly teased. The warm smile on his face caused these strong men to appear somewhat insignificant at this moment. Of course, all of them were men. Hence, there was no need to hide these words. Xiao Yan was startled when he heard this. He immediately laughed and shook his head. There is no need to be embarrassed. Who younger than thirty in this guard unit is able to escape Xiao Jie's enchantment? However, all of them understand that they can only think about such matters in their hearts. Xiao Jie is already an elite Dou Wang at such a young age. Her great talent is only surpassed by elder young miss in the entire Han clan. With the status and position of us guards, it is little different from attempting to get something far beyond us. Han Chong patted Xiao Yan's chest and sighed. Xiao Yan nodded slightly. Although he was unaware of just how strong the Han clan was, being the young lady of the Han clan, Han Shui's status was naturally higher than these guards. Hence, these young men in the clan who harbored a crush on her would likely end up with a dashed dream. However, Xiao Jie, young miss, is indeed quite a good person. Although she is usually very stern, she treats us guards quite well. If any guard ends up seriously injured in a mission, she would get the clan to fork over some money to give to that guard's kin. It should be known that once a person lost his use in other places, the other party would abandon you. One should consider himself lucky if the other party doesn't quietly kill you because they are afraid that you will leak some secret. Han Chong smacked his mouth and said. Xiao Yan was startled. It was unexpected that this cold-looking lady would actually have such a kind heart. Han Shui did not have a big appetite. Hence, she stood up after just a short while. 
Her pretty eyes swept over the tents before immediately getting a hold of Han Chong. She spoke indifferently, those on duty tonight should not drink alcohol. The others should also drink less. Everyone should pay more attention when we pass through the territory of the demon snake Xia Mang tomorrow. She did not stay any longer after saying these words. With gentle footsteps, she slowly entered her tent before extinguishing the light within it. The atmosphere within the campgrounds was no longer as relaxing as it had been earlier once Han Shui re-entered her tent. Some people knit their brows before softly cursed. Due to Xiao Yan being quite far away, he was unable to clearly hear what was being said. However, he could vaguely make out something demon snake. It was likely the whatever demon snake Xia Mang that Han Shui had mentioned earlier. Ugh, damn it, I had forgotten about that greedy and lecherous bastard. All right, let's all stop drinking. Double the guards tonight and ensure nothing goes wrong. Han Chong held the wine jar and violently poured it into his mouth. After which, he tossed the wine jar aside, stood up, and spoke in a deep voice. Everyone also began to toss the wine jars aside after hearing Han Chong's cry. After which, they scattered and strengthened the defenses and patrols of the campground. Xiao Yan was a little stunned when he looked at the campgrounds, which had swiftly become a lot more solemn. A moment later, he stood up and asked, Big Brother Han, just what is that demon snake Xia Mang? Han Chong laughed bitterly when he heard this. He said, We will pass by a place called the Ten Thousand Snake Gorge. That place is the territory of a demon snake called Xia Mang. That fellow's strength might have just reached the Dou Huang class, but even some experts at the peak of the Dou Huang class don't wish to get entangled with him because he, as the demon snake, is able to control all the poison snakes rank 4 and below in the 10,000 snake gorge. Hence, he has occupied that spot for many years. One has to pay an expensive toll if one wants to successfully pass through it. Anyone who refuses will have have difficulty leaving the 10,000 snake gorge alive. A Do Huang class demon snake. It actually possesses an intelligence and knows how to occupy a territory and be a bandit. Xiao Yan's face was somewhat strange when he spoke. Rank 6 magical beasts mostly have quite a high intelligence. Moreover, this Xia Mang has eaten a demon transformation pill. Hence, it can escape its snake shape. Its intelligence is also higher than other rank 6 magical beast. Han Chong said. Demon transformation pill. This medicinal pill is actually able to allow a magical beast to transform its body. I remember that only a body transformation pill has such an effect and that is a tier 7 medicinal pill. Xiao Yan spoke in a stunned manner. The demon transformation pill is only a tier 6 medicinal pill. Its effect is indeed similar to that of a body transformation pill. However, it only allows a partial transformation and its effect is far inferior to a body transformation pill. Such a medicinal pill is most sought after in some magical beast clan. Han Chong explained. Xiao Yan only sighed in relief after hearing this. He no understood the worry of Han Shui and everyone else. After all, the strongest in this convoy of theirs was Han Shui, and she only had the strength of a Dou Wang. She was undoubtedly far inferior when compared to Xia Mang. Hopefully this fellow will not ask for a huge sum tomorrow. Ugh, brother Xiao Yan, you should go and rest first. I still need to command the others to strengthen our defenses and make the proper preparations. Han Chong sighed. Immediately, he patted Xiao Yan's shoulders, turned around, and walked toward a tent. Xiao Yan looked at the campground, which had become much quieter. He could only helplessly shake his head. He turned and returned to his own tent. However, Xiao Yan did not sleep immediately upon returning to the tent. Instead, he took out a bottle of medicinal liquid, which he had used when training in the magma world back then from his storage ring. After which, 
he applied it all over his body. That kind of icy cool feeling caused the piercing pain within his body to be greatly reduced. Moreover, Xiao Yan was able to sense a thread of warm energy following his skin and slowly merge into his body. After a couple more days, the injuries that I have received should gradually improve. At that time, my body will be able to accommodate the entry of some Dou Qi. Xiao Yan sensed the change within his body and his expression also relaxed. He put the linen clothes back on his body. After which, he sat cross-legged and entered a training state, carefully absorbing the natural energy to repair his injured body. The next day, Xiao Yan opened his eyes when some noise sounded within the campsite. He clenched his fist, sensed the weakening pain within his body, and involuntarily smiled. Perhaps it was because he ended up frequently injured, but his recovery rate in the face of such injuries caused even him to feel surprise. After getting up and arranging his clothes, Xiao Yan walked out of the tent. He smiled at Han Chang's group, who was hurrying to pack up the camp, before stepping forward and lending a hand. Han Chang's group, which was aware of Han Shui's character, did not reject Xiao Yan's help. They simply smiled and handed some simpler tasks to Xiao Yan. Xiao Yan threw the tent in his hand into a carriage and had just turned around when a serene fragrance passed by him. The figure immediately paused and a pair of pretty eyes swept over. A faint voice also sounded, You will continue to remain in the carriage today. Don't come out. She did not give Xiao Yan the opportunity to speak. She returned to her own carriage. After which, a moving cold cry was emitted from within it. Start the convoy. The corner of Xiao Yan's mouth twitched involuntarily as he looked at the convoy, which was proceeding forward with a creaking sound. This person is really not bad. I will just wait and see. If any accident is to happen, I will quietly lend a hand. Chapter 947 10,000 Snake Gorge The sandy wind blew over the desolate desert as a howling sound lingered in the sky. The wind carried a wave of sand as it flew into the distance. Some black spots gradually appeared at the end of the road. A moment later, the black dots approached. It was actually a convoy. There was nearly a hundred guards with stern faces guarding the convoy. Numerous cautious gazes swept around them. Their hands were also tightly holding the weapons on their backs. The location of this part of the desert was already approaching the external part of the northern central plains region. Hence, one would occasionally see one or two figures. However, they were extremely sparse and they disappeared within the blink of an eye. The entire road rang only with the sound of horse hooves and the eagle cries that were transmitted from the sky. Xiao Yan was leaning on the window within a bumpy carriage. His gaze looked over the stern-looking guards from the Han clan. The atmosphere today was different from the usual relaxed feeling. Even Gue Tu and a few others who were basically joking around every day had also shut their mouths. Their hands, which were holding on to their weapons, tightened and relaxed repeatedly, revealing the anxiety in their hearts. Looks like the whatever demon snake Xia Mang has quite a fierce reputation here. He is actually able to cause these people to be so anxious, Xiao Yan softly muttered after absorbing the expressions of those around into his eyes. Xiao Yan mused for a moment before shaking his head. After which, he sat cross-legged in the carriage, shut his eye, and recuperated. The bumpiness within the carriage continued for around two hours or so before it suddenly came to a stop. At this moment, Xiao Yan, within the carriage, had suddenly opened his eyes. His gaze passed through the gap of the window and was coincidentally able to see a steep mountain peak not far away. In the middle of the mountain peak was a crack that appeared to have been cleaved apart. The crack was around a couple of dozen feet in size, appearing like a gorge. When the carriage came to a stop, Xiao Yan's spiritual perception acutely sensed that everyone's heart beats had become a little faster. It seemed that this should be the so-called Ten Thousand Snake Gorge. 
Everyone, be careful, we are entering the area of the Ten Thousand Gorge. Gue too, lead some people to scatter some snake repellent powder along the way. The snakes in it are the eyes of Xia Mang. As long as they are not disturbed, we should be able to smoothly pass through. Additionally, even if we we are discovered, do not attack without orders. Those who disobey will be punished according to the clan rules. Han Chang's stern cry suddenly sounded from outside the carriage while Xiao Yan was deep in thought. Yes sir. A response followed after Han Chang's cry sounded. Let's go. Han Chang's expression was solemn as he nodded. He immediately waved his hand and commanded with a deep voice. The convoy began to move once again upon Han Chang's orders. After which, it slowly advanced toward the steep mountain range. Brother Xiao Yan, if anything is to happen later, I would like to request something of you. Try your best to bring Xiao Jia away. A low voice suddenly sounded from outside while Xiao Yan was leaning against the carriage window. He was involuntarily startled. With a turn of his head, he saw that the person was Han Chong. Nothing should happen. That Xia Mang merely wants a toll fee. Won't everything be settled if you were to give him the fee at that time? Xiao Yan asked. If Xiao Jia is not around, it is likely that we can settle it by just paying some money. However, ugh, that bastard snake is not only greedy, but it is also like a beast in rut when it meets a beautiful woman. Hence, if any accident happens at that time, there is still quite a great distance to Tian Bay City from here. Even the Han clan would have difficulty posing much of a threat to it. Han Chong looked at the front carriage which was emitting a serene fragrance, sighed, and bitterly laughed. Xiao Yan only came to a sudden understanding upon hearing this. They were actually worried about her. No wonder the group appeared as though they were about to meet a great enemy. Big Brother Han, you can rest assured that nothing will happen to everyone. Xiao Yan smiled as he replied. Han Chong merely treated Xiao Yan's words as a form of consolation. He let out a bitter laugh as he mocked himself. He clearly understood that Xiao Yan was currently a seriously injured person, yet he still inexplicably came and told him this. If anything were to happen at that time, it was likely that Xiao Yan would not even have the ability to protect himself. How would he help the young miss? Han Chong sighed. When he saw the carriages gradually enter the gorge, he could only helplessly shake his head. After which, he rode his horse and swiftly galloped forward before beginning to closely examine the sides for any activity. At this moment, the convoy was still entering the Ten Thousand Snake Gorge. Due to them being afraid to disturb anything, their carriages were all covered by clothes. The mouths of the black-horned bull pulling the truck was also blocked. The group was sneaking into the gorge in this stealthy manner. All the guards of the Han clan on both sides of the carriage had already drawn their weapons. Their other hand were holding a white-colored powder they repeatedly scattered on both sides of the road. The convoy did not meet with anything amid this anxious atmosphere. Around ten plus minutes later, they passed through the middle part of the gorge. From Hedda, they could vaguely see the exit of the gorge in the distance. Almost everyone quietly sighed in relief in their hearts when they saw this. While everyone had relaxed, Xiao Yan within the carriage slowly opened his eyes. He immediately sighed softly. They were indeed unable to hide from trouble. The sigh had just sounded when the entire gorge instantly shook. Immediately, the trees on both sides of the gorge swiftly collapsed, revealing some enormous snakes. Damn it! we have been discovered. Increase our speed. Go. Han Chong cried out furiously. His expression became much uglier when he saw this scene. At this moment, there was no need for him to cry out. The experienced Han clan's guards had already went all out to urge the Blackhorn Bull forward. After which, the convoy rumbled and sped up, trying its best to charge out of the gorge. 
Bang! When the convoy was still around less than a hundred meters from the gorge's exit, numerous enormous figures suddenly rushed over from both sides of the gorge. Finally, they sealed off the entire road. Their savage, enormous mouths were emitting snake tongues that contained a stench with a chi-chi sound. Dark, cold snake eyes locked onto everyone in the convoy. Damn it. Han Chang's heart immediately sunk upon seeing the countless number of enormous snakes blocking their paths. Although these enormous snakes were only rank three magical beasts, their bodies were extremely large. With just a couple of dozens of them, they were able to block the entire road until there was not the slightest gap left. Waves of rustling sounds were transmitted from the surrounding bushes after the road was blocked. Immediately, countless large and small, various colored poison snakes came out in a densely packed manner. Finally, they surrounded the entire convoy. TSK TSK, a group of fools is actually thinking of slipping past this great old Xia. A strange laugh suddenly sounded from the sky after the encircling took shape. Immediately, a black-green figure swiftly flew down from the top of the gorge. Within a breath's time, he appeared in the sky above the convoy. The figure that had just appeared in the sky above the convoy was quite strange. His human body and limbs were covered with densely packed black-green scales. The spot where his head was supposed to be located had a savage-looking snake head. Its tiny eyes contained a dark coldness and ruthlessness as they stared at the people below. Additionally, on the back of this half-human half-snake demon was a pair of black-green dochi wings, that carried a strong wild that swept through the gorge as they flapped. The expression of Han Chang's group immediately turned pale white when they saw the black-green figure that had appeared. Their voices trembled a little. Demon Snake Xia Mang Xia Mang looked down at the convoy from above. He suddenly laughed as he casually said, All of you should know the rules of this grandpa, no. Han Chang's face trembled a little. He immediately walked out of the convoy, took out a crystal card and respectfully said, Of course we know about it. Commander Xia Mang, we are the convoy from the Han clan in Tianbei City. This is a small gift that I hope Commander Sir will accept. Xia Meng extended his hand. A suction force unceremoniously pulled the crystal card in Han Chang's hand. He glanced at it before parting his mouth and laughing, not bad. Looks like all of you still have some sincerity. Han Chang's face rejoiced slightly upon hearing this. He carefully said, in that case, can Commander Sir allow our convoy to pass? This is only natural, Xia Mang smiled strangely. His snake tongue licked the corner of his mouth before his finger suddenly pointed at the carriage where Han Shui was located. He smiled lewdly and said, however, leave her behind first. The expressions of everyone in the convoy suddenly changed. Quite a number of people quietly tightened their grip on their weapons. Han Chong also gently inhaled a breath and respectfully questioned, What does Commander Sir mean? He he, little girl, there is no need to hide. This grandpa has already sniffed the kind of fragrance on a woman's body from a great distance away. Moreover, this grandpa also knows that this time around I have met an exquisite one, hence, you should come out. Xia Meng ignored Han Chong and laughed strangely at the carriage his gaze had locked onto. Bang! Xia Meng's voice had just sounded and the roof of the carriage burst apart. A human figure flashed up before standing on the roof of the carriage. An ice cold gaze glared at Xia Meng in the sky. A red glow immediately erupted in Xia Meng's eyes when he saw Han Shui's face. He immediately laughed to the sky, it is really as this grandpa had expected. The reward this time around is really rich. It has been a long time since I have met such exquisite stuff. Han Shui's face was ice cold. A killing intent flashed through her pretty eyes. She clenched her delicate hand and a long sword appeared. 
She flapped the dochi wings on her back as she suddenly shot toward Xia Mang. He he, little girl, how can this Dou Wang strength of yours escape from the palms of this grandpa? Xia Mang laughed out loud when he saw Han Shui charge over. He widened his mouth and a jade green Dou Qi pillar shot out. Finally, it smashed into her longsword in a lightning-like manner. The longsword was shattered and Han Shui's figure was also forced back. A paleness surfaced on her sleek red face. The gap between a Dou Wang and a Dou Huang was too great. Commander Xia, we are people from the Han clan in Tianbei City. If you attack us, the head of the Han clan and the elders will definitely not let you off. Han Chong immediately cried out furiously when he saw Han Shui suffer a setback. TSK TSK, Han clan huh? Although there's the presence of those old fellows, but what can they do to me? I can always flee if I can't defeat them. Moreover, as long as I leave all of you here, who would know that I attacked the people from the Han clan? Xia Meng laughed in a strange manner. After which, his mouth emitted an unusual hissing sound. When this hissing sound was emitted, cold glows flashed in the eyes of the countless number of poisonous snakes on both sides of the gorge. Immediately, they shot toward the convoy like arrows. The extremely packed scene looked as though it was raining poisonous snakes, appearing extremely terrifying. The faces of almost everyone revealed despair when they were faced with such a frightening number of poisonous snake attacks. They held their weapons tightly and prepared to fight to their deaths. Bang! 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 The poisonous snakes from all directions seemed to be attempting to cover the sky. However, when they were less than ten feet from the convoy, their bodies suddenly stiffened. Immediately, they emitted a crackling sound as they transformed into clusters of fireballs. Within a short instant, they turned into a pile of ashes that scattered from the sky. Looking at this sudden unexpected change, everyone present, including Han Chang's group, Han Shui, and Xia Mang were all stunned. This, this is. Chapter 948, Mysterious Strong Person The pale black ashes slowly drifted down from the sky before forming a thin black-colored layer that covered the surface of the ground. This unusual scene caused a chill to rise within everyone's heart. No one knew just what had happened. Even with the strength of Xia Mang, he could only just stand and watch as many poisonous snakes suddenly turn to ashes. Even he was completely unaware of the reason for the unexpected change. A strange silence covered the gorge. A countless number of poisonous snakes on both sides of the gorge appeared to have sensed an uneasiness. Their bodies were tensed up while an irritable hissing was repeatedly emitted from their mouths, causing the atmosphere within the valley to become much darker and colder than before. Han Chang's group looked at each other. They immediately slowly stepped back the convoy and protected Han Shui at their center. Their alert eyes were locked on Xia Mang in the sky. The silent atmosphere continued for a moment before Xia Mang finally recovered. His gaze was somewhat hesitant as he swept over the place. It landed on Han Shui's attractive lovely face and his eyes once again turned fiery hot. Clenching his teeth, he once again emitted a sharp hissing sound from his mouth. The countless number of poisonous snakes on both sides of the valley hesitated a little upon hearing this hissing sound before a fierce glow flashed across their eyes. They twitched their bodies, which became just like many sharp arrows that emitted a shio shio sound as they shot over to the convoy. Seeing the poisonous snakes launching another attack, Han Chang's group quickly summoned their Dou Qi. However, before they could attack, the mysterious bang-bang sound once again rang across the sky. A countless number of fireballs appeared before swiftly being extinguished like the epiphyllum flower. Finally, the snakes turned to dust that slowly scattered down. A wild joy surged into the eyes of Han Chang's group upon seeing this scene. At this point they could guess that there was someone secretly helping them. Xiao Jie, Young miss, 
an excitement surfaced on Han Chong's face as he looked at Han Shui and softly uttered. Han Shui gently waved her hand. Her pretty eyes slowly swept around her, but she did not discover the slightest trace of anyone. Immediately, her brows were slightly knit together. Could their luck really be this good? They were actually able to meet an expert who would lend them a hand at such a moment. Her pretty eyes wandered before suddenly and unexpectedly pausing on a carriage a moment later. That place, was where Xiao Yan was located. Han Xue's long eyelashes blinked gently when her sight paused on the carriage. Before she could think deeper, Xia Mang's dark, cold voice was transmitted from the sky. May I know which expert is here? I am Xia Mang. Please forgive me if I have offended you in any way. However, the matter today is a private one between these fellows and I, friend, please do not intervene. Xia Mang's eyes swept across the sky as he cupped his hands together. Xiao Mang's voice slowly reverberated through this gorge. However, there was no reply. Just when he was feeling somewhat frustrated, an elderly voice spoke in a concise manner. Get lost. The sudden elderly voice appeared to have descended from the sky before lingering beside everyone's ears. At this moment, the joy within the hearts of Han Chang's group grew denser. There was indeed an expert helping them. Han Xue's pretty eyes turned away from the carriage where Xiao Yan was located when the elderly voice sounded. They swept to other locations, intent to find this mysterious expert. Do you really wish to fight because of these useless people? A fierce glow flashed across Xia Mang's eyes. However, he did not dare to attack because of the strange scene from earlier. All he did was speak in a sinister manner. If you do not get lost within ten breaths, you will die. The owner of the voice earlier once again gave an extremely concise reply to Xia Mang's words. Even Han Chong and the others could hear a faint cold laugh and ridicule from the voice. It seemed to be mocking Xia Mang for being overconfident of his strength. Xia Mang's eyes became gloomy after being treated so rudely twice. He was able to act as he pleased in this place for many years not because there were no experts who wanted to kill him. Instead, it was because this mountain range was really too large and there were a countless number of snake holes within it. As long as Xia Mang transformed his body and entered the deep mountains, finding him would be an extremely troublesome matter. It was due to this that this fellow's fierce name had gradually become stronger. A dense coldness flashed across Xia Mang's eyes, but nothing could be discerned from his face. Instead, he cupped his hands in all directions and said, Since friend insist on protecting them, Xia Mang shall give you this face today. Xia Mang had just reached his last word when a cold glint erupted from his eyes. His feet immediately pressed against the empty air as his body flashed like jade green lightning. Within the blink of an eye, he appeared in front of Han Shui. Powerful Dou Qi surged out at this moment and an enormous air flow shook Han Chang's group until they swiftly stepped back. Little girl, hardly any woman whom this grandpa fancies can escape. Xia Mang laughed lewdly as Dou Qi surged. He immediately grabbed at Han Shui. The swiftness of his speed was something that Han Shui could not dodge with her strength. Hence, she could only watch as the other party's claw landed on her shoulder. You are seeking death. Xia Mang's hand had just landed and a cold cry that contained killing intent suddenly sounded. Immediately an invisible energy ripple merged with the space in a lightning-like manner. An instant later, it exploded strangely on Xia Mang's chest. Bang! A low, deep explosion sounded, but it did not cause even the slightest energy collision. Nevertheless, over half of the Dou Qi that permeated Xia Mang's body immediately scattered. An enormous force exploded on his chest and the wild violent strength blasted the scales on his skin until they were drenched with fresh blood. Xia Mang's body hurried away. Protect Xiao Jie, young miss. The invisible attack forced back Xia Mang. 
Seeing this, Han Chang's group hurriedly swarmed forward. They swarmed and surrounded Han Shui. Their gazes were viciously staring at Xia Mang. Han Shui's pretty eyes stared at Xia Mang, who had been left in such a miserable state with just one attack. A monstrous wave was raised within her heart. She knew that despite this fellow being loathful, his strength was not weak. Adding to the fact that his original form was a magical beast with exceptionally strong defensive capabilities, he did not expect that he would end up in this miserable manner without even having seen his enemy, just how frightening strong was the person who had attacked him. It was likely that they would hardly find such an expert even within the entire Han clan. Xia Mang continued stepping back over a hundred steps. Only then did he stop his body with a shocked expression. He wiped off the blood trace on the corner of his mouth, looked all around him, and involuntarily cried out loud, Spiritual strength. You are an alchemist. Xia Mang had finally recognized this invisible strength upon contact. That was clearly the spiritual strength that alchemists specialized in. That kind of spiritual attack was also clearly the skill that an alchemist was most adept at. Humph. The owner of that voice ignored Xia Mang's exclamation. A cold snort was emitted and an invisible spiritual strength once again rippled in the air. Immediately, it contained a thunderbolt-like momentum as it violently shot toward Xia Mang. Upon sensing the spiritual attack that was heading over once again, the scales all over Xia Mang's body stood on end. The terror on his face also became denser. In the end, he finally let out a sharp cry, turned around, and transformed into a dark black figure that fled miserably into the mountain forest in front of the stunned gazes of Han Chang's group. He completely vanished within a couple of flashes. Xia Mang genuinely sensed a bone-piercing killing intent within that spiritual attack. He knew that if he stayed any longer, the owner of the spiritual strength would definitely slice him into pieces of snake meat. Being able to survive in this place for so many years, Xia Mang clearly knew just who to offend and who not to offend. Offending such an expert for a beauty was really not worthwhile. After Xia Mang fled, the countless number of poisonous snakes on both sides of the gorge immediately turned around and fled like mice. Even the dozens of enormous snakes blocking the road went all out to flee into the grass. Within a short couple of minutes, the gorge, which had been firmly blocked, had become empty. This scene caused Han Chang's group to feel stunned. Damn it, these fellows are really practiced in fleeing for their lives. It looks that they have frequently been chased after by people. No one knew who said these words amid the silent atmosphere that caused everyone to laugh out loud. The loudness of the laughter appeared to be an attempt at spitting out all of their earlier shock. After laughing, Han Chong patted his chest. He had really took one turn above the tip of a blade. Fortunately, nothing had happened. Han Shui's ice-cold, pretty face defrosted slightly at this moment. She immediately raised her head and cupped her hands respectfully toward the sky. This junior is Han Yu from the Han clan. Elder, thank you for lending a hand today. Is it possible for you to reveal yourself so that this younger generation can remember you in my heart? The old me has merely coincidentally passed by. There is nothing to see. Go. A faint old voice was slowly transmitted from the sky making it difficult for one to find its actual position. After the voice sounded, that mysterious expert seemed to have left. Not even the slightest noise was emitted. The quiet surroundings caused Han Shui to sigh disappointedly. She waved her hand and a clear moving voice was emitted from her small mouth, let's continue our journey. Han Chang's group hurriedly nodded upon hearing this. After which, they spread apart and continued to protect the convoy in their midst. A wave of cracking sounds appeared and the convoy advanced once again. Han Shui had also returned to her own convoy after the convoy started to move. 
An unknown feeling caused her to suddenly throw her gaze to the carriage where Xiao Yan was located when she was boarding her own carriage. A moment later, she finally knit her brows, and mocked herself. Her toes pressed on the ground and her lovely body leaped back into her carriage. Xiao Yan, who was seated cross-legged in a carriage, slowly opened his eyes when Han Shui returned to her carriage. He held his chest and coughed intensely while smiling bitterly. His injuries had yet to completely recover, but he had already maneuvered his spiritual strength to fight with others. It was a little tough on him. Chapter 949, Spatial Strength After leaving the Ten Thousand Snake Gorge, the entire convoy had descended into a joyful atmosphere of having survived a calamity. The solemn atmosphere from earlier completely vanished. Everyone was busy talking about the scene that had occurred earlier. The frightening strength that the mysterious expert had displayed was shocking to them. Haha, <laughs> the fleeing manner of that bastard snake Xia Mang earlier was just like a foolish snake that had been beaten unconscious. It was really enjoyable. Although we were nearly finished off, being able to see that demon snake Xia Mang, with his fierce reputation, being turned into such a miserable manner made it worthwhile. This is because of the great strength of that elder. From what Xia Mang said, that elder should be an alchemist. According to my guess, he should at least be a tier 6 alchemist. Otherwise, it is extremely difficult for him to rely on his spiritual strength to frighten off Xia Mang. TSK TSK, a tier 6 alchemist. I recall that the chief alchemist in our Han clan is only a tier 5 alchemist, no. Even though that is the case, the clan head is still very courteous when meeting him. That's right, we can be considered lucky this time around. Unfortunately, we did not get to see that elder. A tier 6 alchemist. That is a top existence even in the Tian Bay city. Stop daydreaming. An expert naturally has the pride of an expert. We should already count out and thank him for rescuing us in passing. Xiao Yan sat in the carriage and involuntarily laughed when he heard the heated discussions outside. It was fortunate that he did not show himself earlier. The curtain of the carriage was suddenly opened while Xiao Yan was quietly sighing. Immediately, a smiling Han Chong strode in. He randomly threw a water bag to the former and smiled as he asked, You were not shocked, were you? Xiao Yan received the water bag, drank a mouthful of water before he nodded with a grin. He softly replied, I'm alright. Ugh, we were lucky this time around to meet an elder who helped us. Otherwise, it is likely that we would have been killed in the Ten Thousand Snake Gorge. Han Chong sat in the carriage and joyously said, however, that elder is really quite nice. Normally, there is seldom anyone who would bother in the matter of others unless they were acquainted. Xiao Yan grinned. It seemed that Han Chong in front of him had suffered deep shock within the gorge. Now, he was exhaling all of it in one go. Moreover, the unceasing praises he had for that mysterious elder, who had intervened, caused Xiao Yan's expression to become somewhat strange as he nodded. After speaking in a long-winded manner for over ten minutes, Han Chong finally stopped in a manner that suggested he had yet to say enough. He smiled at Xiao Yan and said, after passing through the Ten Thousand Snake Gorge, the remaining journey will be uneventful. Although there might be some bandits and displaced people along the way, they are not a threat to us. Originally, we would not have passed through the Ten Thousand Snake Gorge during this journey. However, we met with a sandstorm in the desert and ended up deviating from our path. If we were to head back, it would have required an extremely long time. Hence, we can only brace ourselves and take this route. Big Brother Han, how much longer will it take from this place to Tian Bay City? Xiao Yan came to a sudden understanding. He was still uncertain about why Han Xue's group was not received by experts dispatched by the Han clan despite knowing that they needed to pass through the Ten Thousand Snake Gorge along the way. After hearing this, he understood that they had changed routes. 
He nodded his head, hesitated for a moment, and eventually posed his question. If everything is smooth, there is still around another six days. Han Chong thought for a moment before replying. Six days huh, Xiao Yan softly muttered when he heard this. His heart immediately let out a quiet sigh of relief. His injuries should be mostly recovered within six days. There would definitely be quite a number of experts when they reached that city. If he did not recover his strength quickly, it was likely that he would be faced with a lot of trouble. After all, regardless of where one was located, one would only have the right to speak and ability to protect oneself only if one possessed strength. Xiao Yan planned to begin gathering information about the Hall of Souls once he reached Tianbei City. If it was possible, he would head to the Burning Flame Valley and obtain the remaining two changes of the Sky Fire Three Mysterious Change. Once he possessed both of these changes, he should be able to contend with an elite Dozong head-on even if he did not use the angry Buddha Lotus Flame. Han Chong was completely unaware of the thoughts within Xiao Yan's heart. Hence, after chatting for a moment, he instructed Xiao Yan to recuperate properly before he descended from the carriage. The convoy followed the main road and headed south, slowly progressing toward Tianbei City, which was some distance away. Due to everyone being aware that Xiao Yan was seriously injured, seldom anyone disturbed him after Han Chong left. This gave him the time to quietly recuperate. The bumpiness of the carriage also continued for a period of time before slowly coming to a stop. Xiao Yan opened his eyes within the carriage, glanced at the sky, and knew that the convoy was about to begin setting up camp again. Traveling at night in this desert was quite dangerous, and it would be extremely inefficient. Hence, there was seldom anyone who would journey at night. After an afternoon's recuperation, the intense pain within Xiao Yan's body greatly weakened. He was even able to sense some Dou Qi flowing within his veins. Although it was extremely tiny when compared to the past, the speed at which his injuries were recovering caused him to feel quite happy. Xiao Yan pulled open the curtain of the carriage and walked down after the carriage came to a stop. He knew Han Xue's character and did not wish to be reprimanded by her again. Once he descended from the carriage, Xiao Yan grabbed some tent poles and walked over to the tent spot Han Chang's group had selected. However, he would sniff a faint serene fragrance being transmitted in front of him each time he took a couple of steps forward. He immediately paused, raised his head, and looked at Han Shui in front. After which, he smiled at her and nodded. This chapter's initial release occurred on the N0V3LB1N site. Han Shui stood prettily on some rock fragments. Her pretty eyes stared at the young man in front of her. His rough linen clothes gave him an additional ordinariness. His face was considered quite young and delicate, but it could not be considered handsome. Nevertheless, it was a face that one could continue watching. He seemed to belong to the the kind of man who appeared more interesting the longer one looked at him. Han Shui's pretty eyes studied the other party's eyes only for her to be slightly startled. Those dark black eyes did not reveal an uneasiness nor fleetingness that others displayed when watching her. All that was visible within them was a slight smile and calmness. The eyes were just like deep water that had difficulty forming even the slightest ripple. Miss Han Shui, is there anything? When Han Shui's pretty eyes were staring at Xiao Yan, he began to be unable to endure this attention of hers. He took the lead to open his mouth and inquire with a chuckle. Han Shui's eyebrows trembled slightly when she heard this. She immediately extended her hand slowly and grabbed Xiao Yan's arm amid some stunned gazes around them. Probing Dou Qi was swiftly transmitted into Xiao Yan's body. Xiao Yan's expression did not change even a little as he sensed the Dou Qi enter his body. A thought passed through his mind and the Dou Qi within his body immediately scattered into his veins. The Dou Qi circulated one round around Xiao Yan's body before helplessly returning. It used the same route as it traveled back into Han Shui's body. 
Only then did she release her hand. Disappointment flashed across her eyes. It seemed that her little ridiculous guess did indeed originate from nowhere. Currently, the only thing that she had discovered within Xiao Yan's body was his extremely serious internal injuries. It's nothing. Han Shui shook her head. She glanced at the tent poles he was carrying on his shoulders and said, the internal injuries within your body are quite serious. There is no need for you to work. Let other people do these things. Cuckoo, there is no need to. Although I am injured, I am not some useless person. Xiao Yan heartily laughed. He shook his head before continuing to carry the tent poles. He sidestepped Han Shui and walked toward Han Chang's group. Han Shui involuntarily mocked herself as she turned her head and studied the somewhat skinny back. She actually had that kind of unrealistic thought. Looking at Xiao Yan's appearance, his age was likely similar to hers. Even if he was some training genius, it was likely that he would have difficulty reaching the point of frightening off an elite Dou Huang with just two words at such an age. Looks like it was really just a case of good luck. The desert night was still cold and desolate. A faint silver glow covered the vast land where one could not see the borders even when standing on high ground. The interior of the camp was quiet. Only the occasional crackling of the flame could be heard. There were quite a number of sentries walking back and forth outside of the camp, protecting it. Xiao Yan was seated cross-legged in a somewhat simple tent in the camp. His body was once again covered with that medicinal liquid he used during training. Threads of energy surged from Xiao Yan's surroundings before following his breath as they poured into his body. The Dou Qi within Xiao Yan's body was increasing a little at a time. The feeling of possessing strength gradually returned to Xiao Yan's powerless body. This training continued for a long time. Only when a thread of morning sunlight reached the sky of the desert did Xiao Yan slowly open his eyes. However, there was a shock that was difficult to hide within Xiao Yan's opened eyes. Xiao Yan slowly widened his hands. A jade green Dou Qi slowly surged out as his gaze stared intently at this cluster of Dou Qi. He could vaguely see a faint silver colored energy that appeared to be spatial strength. Xiao Yan inhaled a deep breath of air. Surprise gradually surfaced in his eyes. Spatial strength was a mysterious strength that one needed to reach the Dou Zone class in order to be barely able to control. Before reaching that class, even an expert at the peak of the Dou Huang class did not possess the qualification to control it. However, the thread of silver-colored energy that had appeared within Xiao Yan's Dou Qi was genuine spatial strength. This spatial strength seems to have been left behind when the spatial strength within the space tunnel was destroyed. After which, for some reason, it was not scattered. Instead, it merged with my Dou Qi, it is really the case of a blessing because of a disaster. Xiao Yan's mused for a moment before softly muttering. However, regardless of what the reason, the current me seems to possess a little ability to control spatial strength. Although it is extremely weak, I am really in possession of it. The corner of Xiao Yan's mouth slowly lifted into a smile. A hand was extended out before he suddenly clenched it. When it was clenched, the space in front of him actually formed a slight distortion.